Hey everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos where I teach you how to paint miniatures from start to finish and everything in between that you will ever need. And today, we this is part 27, yellow, where I teach you how to paint yellow as the primary color of a miniature. Now, yellow can be a really difficult color to paint with. In fact, it's pretty much known as one of the worst four, along with black, white, and red. The reason is, yellow is just an overall hard color because if you put it over a dark color, A, you get bad coverage. Yellows don't go over bad, dark colors very easily. It ends, results in a, in a dull color. It shows brush strokes, and it's really bad for shading. Most colors will tint yellow, orange in the shades, or if you use a black, it'll really dirty it up and you have to really cover it over. If you go with a brown, it turns the whole miniature brown. So it just, it's a, it's a little hard for, for shading. So today I'm gonna to tell you what we're gonna do for yellows. We're gonna use, of course, the triad of colors from Citadel Range. We're gonna start with Averland Sunset, and then we're gonna give it a yellow shading, followed by two highlights. Actually, we're gonna do three, but first one, Aerial Yellow. Second one, Flash Gets Yellow. And then we're gonna do an edge highlight with a one-to-one -one mix of white scars and flash gets yellow. Just do a quick edge highlight, pick up some details, and we'll discuss that more later of why I'm choosing white scars and not an off-white such as Ushapti Bone. But let's get to the miniature. That's the important part. Now, yellow is a very, very bright, vibrant color. So unfortunately, when you're painting yellow, I actually really recommend priming white. Now, priming white has its disadvantages. Primarily, you have to get 100% coverage of the model. You can't leave any in the recesses, so that's the key. So let's go over white, because you don't want to do dark. Dark results in a bland, dull yellow. You want a bright, vibrant yellow. So we're gonna take our Avalon Sunset, put in our makeshift palette, and of course, thin it down a little bit, just make it nice and thin. And then we're going to, of course, mix it. You need to mix the paint to a good consistency. As you can see here, it's just a thinner consistency. And that's great. And now we're gonna apply it all to the miniature. Now, the key is you wanna get a nice, solid base coat over your model. That being said though, once you start an area, don't fix the paint until it's completely dry. If you notice after a single coat that you need to just add a little bit more to an area, do so, it doesn't matter. It just takes a little more time to dry, but it's good to get a solid foundation, especially with a color like yellow, it's very important. But as I mentioned, the main downside to using white as a primer is the shades and, and the crevices. If you prime a model black, and you happen to miss a little bit of an area, it looks natural because it just looks like it is a heavily shaded area and the black works perfectly. It's the opposite for white because if you miss a white area, it looks white in the crevices or white in the recesses or white in the area that's missed and that doesn't look right because it should be darker, not lighter. So when you're every prime white, you gotta make sure that you cover the entire miniature. And as I mentioned, Yellow does not cover pretty much anything really well. Even though Avalon Sunset is a pretty dark, uh, deep yellow, you'll notice that even after a single coat, it's not gonna get perfect coverage over the white. So that's why when, when priming the miniature, make sure to get a really nice, even coverage of the miniature with the priming, and then we're just gonna carefully go over it with the yellow, the Avalon Sunset, and go over the entire model, and make sure it is completely covered in Avalon Sunset. But as you can see, I'm just going quickly, and uh, once I apply paint to an area, I s finish it entirely, and then move to the next area. And it's all good. I'm using a pretty good sized brush, because this is uh, a large surface, and I can just keep painting it. That's the key. Remember, the, the base coat is the foundation of the entire paint job, so you gotta make sure that you get that Averland Sunset everywhere you want it to be, and a nice, even coverage if you want that's what you're going for. But it doesn't take me very long because I'm going over white. Now if I was going over dark gray or a black, it would take many, many, many coats and you'd see it result in a darker, duller yellow. And that's not what we're going for. If you want to paint yellow, you want a bright, vibrant yellow in most cases. And this would apply if you're painting orc bad moons or tyranids that are yellow, or in this case, imperial fists, yellow space marines. 
So here's what the model looks like. And as you can see, I was a little bit unhappy with the after it dried. So what I did was I quickly applied a second thin coat of the same paint. Just make sure the consistency of the paint if, if you've left it for a while. It's a great to have a wet palette. We'll discuss that in future videos. And I'm just gonna reapply another coat to the base coat. Certain areas that I've noticed were a little bit lacking, and that way you get a nice solid foundation for your paint job before proceeding to the shading or washing. And here you go. After the second coat, as you can see now, you have a solid foundation of the deep rich yellow. It's almost a goldish yellow, and it just looks great. It's a great foundation color, and now we can shade it. Now that brings us to the next problem, is shading. The problem is with yellow is if you shade it, it tends to appear orange. Even this yellow shade that we're going to be using, this yellow shade, Cassandra Yellow Shade from Games Workshop, um, you better water it down. That's the thing. You want to thin it down because if you apply it in its full contents to the miniature, you will basically get an orange. And the orange just doesn't work really well. So the key is to tone it down a bit and get a, a dark yellow and try to avoid the orange. There are actually a couple other options for, highlight, uh, for shading your miniatures, and I'll go over a couple of them after. Uh, you can go black if you wish, but black will really tint the paint job. So we're going to water down the yellow. And then we're going to apply it very lightly and gingerly to the surfaces we want to wash. So we're going to apply it the whole miniature in this case because we want to get all those crevices and recesses looking nice. But as you can see here, um, the yellow is going to get in there and, and tint it a bit for the shade. But we don't want it to overwhelm the color. We don't want it to make the whole model orange. And even watered down, I did about a 2 to 1 mix of water to yellow shade and it's still appearing a little bit orange as you're going to notice. So obviously once again, once you start a surface, finish it, then move on to the next one. And if you're unhappy with the shading after a single surface, feel free to do a second one. Just make sure the first one's completely dry before proceeding to the second step. But we're going to apply it to all the miniatures. As you can see now, the details are really starting to shine, but it is appearing very close to an orange. Now the other option you could use is an Agrax Earthshade, but once again, it will turn most of the model brown. So I don't recommend that. Um, and the other shade that I know people do use, and I have actually occasionally used it, is Sarah from Sepia, which I'll go over in just a moment as well. But that's a, that's a viable option. But I recommend if you're using yellow, uh, shade it with the yellow. You know, stick to color, it makes sense. You know, it, and try not to make it orange. So water it down and just carefully go over all the surfaces. Once again, I'm using a pretty decent sized brush because I can apply it to all the miniature. I'm going to keep the gun white just to keep it white and know that we did it over a white primer. And as I said, the other option is Sarah from Sepia. It does produce a little bit stronger of a shade in the recesses as that sepia tone instead of a yellowish orange tone. So if you really want the sepia tone, go with Sarah from Sepia. It actually does work well and it doesn't tint, providing you water down correctly, it really doesn't tint the yellow very much. So here we go. Just let it dry, and it might take a little while, but here's what the model looks like after it's dry. And we were able to get it shaded with very minimal tinting. It did become a little bit orangey, as I mentioned it would, but it's not very orange. In fact, it's, it's very close to a yellow once again. So now we just gotta bring it back up to a bright yellow. So we're gonna take our Ariel Yellow, the very first shade color in this triad of colors, as I call them from Citadel. And once again, we're going to thin it down slightly. Now, these are the layer colors from Games Workshop, so they tend to be pretty thin anyway. So I'm going to add just a little bit of thinner just to get it to a good consistency. And once again, we're going to layer it up again. Painting with layers is extremely important with these colors like yellow or white. you got to build them up in layers, and you got to be patient because that's the only way to get a really nice blend. And uh, yeah, so now we're going to apply it to all the surfaces we want to highlight, like the helmet, the, the shoulder pads, basically the whole armor. What we're going to do is we're going to keep the recesses the nice dark yellow and we're going to keep the area next to the recesses the the yellow as well so what we're going to do is we're going to build a very nice gradual uh, gradient from the recesses and the edges to the center of each area which will be the lightest so as you see here i'm leaving plenty of area that is uh, shaded and the great thing about yellows is remember they always all these paints will always dry darker than they currently are so they tend to blend really well together I do find yellows blend well together. So you can apply multiple layers and uh, they will just they'll blend pretty well together, providing you do a, a nice gradient. So as you can see, I'm just applying it and leaving a gap near the armor and with the same thing with the hands. And I'm just highlighting the fingers by with a quick overbrush. And the same rule applies. If after a single application of the Euro Yellow, you're not happy, which I wasn't, I applied a second quick layer. 
This won't take these layers do not take very long to dry because they're quite thin down Providing you don't work in a really humid atmosphere So you can apply multiple layers especially for batch painting It's not gonna be too hard at all because you can just paint a layer at a time and By the time you're done the last model in the batch painting the first one will be dry and you can repeat the process as you go So as you see here, I'm applying it. I'm leaving a good amount of area with the armor and between the arrow and the uh, the areas as well but uh, as you can see this yellow aerial yellow is actually quite brighter than the first uh, than the base coat combined with the shade so we're going to highlight it up and we're going to repeat this process again of course uh, with a single another just quick layer and each with each layer you go further and further away from the crevices and the recesses and the edges basically we're building towards the center of these areas as well as uh, upwards we're looking at what areas the light source is hitting and highlighting those areas up. So here's what the model looks like after a couple quick coats of aerial yellow and as you can see now we've highlighted it right back up to a nice bright vibrant yellow. It's looking really nice but now we're going to take an even brighter yellow and apply it once again to the more center areas and more upward facing areas. The parts of the model that you really want to accentuate when the light source hits it or when the eye hits it. So we're going to take our flash kits yellow and repeat the process. Of course I thinned it down slightly with some thinner and now I'm just going to apply it to the miniature. And as you see here, I'm going to go even further away from the recesses. And I'm going to go towards more of the top parts of the miniature and blend downwards. And once again, as I mentioned, ye yellows will blend together quite nicely, providing you're taking this approach and using thin down paints. So uh, they'll actually create a really nice, smooth gradient while you're going. So right now I'm focusing more towards the central parts of the helmet. And the more upward parts, the shoulder pads, for example. But uh, it's it's coming along quite well, as you can see. So that's the key with yellows. Take your time, multiple thin layers, go over a white primer, because anything else, you tend to get really dull coats. And I know most people like to paint over black primers, but uh, it really does save you a lot of time not, not having to highlight. You'd have to highlight so many more layers if you went over a dark primer. So many more layers. So right now I'm just highlighting certain parts like the tops of the knee pads and blending downwards, the top of the feet, blending downwards. You basically almost want to take a feathering approach with these uh, with these surfaces and you just go you know a little bit less down each time that you uh, highlight. And therefore you require obviously less paint, which is nice. And as before, if after a single coat you're unhappy with the color, feel free to do a second coat and just build it, keep building it upwards and upwards to lighter and lighter colors. And once again, here's what the model looks like when it's done. Um, now you can stop here. Now this looks pretty good. I would actually recommend stopping here if you're going to any standard quality, uh, any tabletop standard. But um, if you want to do an edge highlight, now people have asked me this before, what do you edge highlight with with a yellow? Now most times I recommend using a off-white, such as a Ushabti Bone. But the problem is in this case is that Ushabti Bone is actually darker than Flash Kit's yellow. So it would actually tone it down, not upwards. So we'll go over that in just a moment. But as you can see, very smooth color. That part on the shoulder pad is actually an error in the molding, not in the paint job. So what we're going to do is to highlight it, we're going to do a one-to-one -one mix of white scars to flash kits yellow. This is one of the few times I actually use white to highlight up a color because uh, it tends to produce a chalky appearance, but this is one of those exceptions. So we're going to do a one-to-one -one mix, thin it down slightly, and we're good to go. So for this last highlight, we're just going to take the edges that we really want to stand out. So I'm going to do an edge highlight around the helmet, like the center of the parts of the helmet, the top of the, the um, top of the helmet. And then for the shoulder pads, I'm just going to do the very top parts. I'm also doing the eyebrow parts of the, of the helmet. But for the shoulder pads and the back parts, I'm just highlighting up the very tops where my light source is hitting and just blending it so that it looks like, you know, it's very bright at the very top parts, like the light source is hitting it from above, like it is now. And then I'm going to highlight, you know, the tips of the knee pads and the feet, just so that the, the eye has an extra thing to just pick up these nice details. And then the, uh, the hands as well. And I'm just doing a quick edge highlight of the hands. And that's it, like that's all we're gonna do. And here's what the final product looks like. As you can see, it didn't take very long at all, and it's great for batch painting, but it took a few layers. You gotta be patient with yellow to paint it properly. So as I said, thin down your paints, paint over a light primer, 
and water down your shades heavily to prevent the orange in the recesses. And that's the key to painting a yellow. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. Here's what he looks like on all sides. I think he turned out pretty well for the amount of time it took. And I hope you were able to take these, this tutorial and paint some awesome yellow as well. So thank you so much for watching this video. And stay tuned for part 28, which is just around the corner. But if you can't wait for part 28, check out The Warp, my premium YouTube channel, where not only will you get to see the next at least five months of Miniature Painting 101 episodes, you also get to see start to finish painting tutorials, more battle reports, and just some awesome wargaming content. So until next time, this is Jay saying, Happy painting, everyone.